And your song, A Cure, I wanted to read uh, some lyrics for our audience. Capitalism is a religion that makes Satan a god, teaches self-righteous people to embrace a facade. I wanted you to expand on what you meant by that. Well, I think I was making a reference to the fact that um, when you think that everything in this world revolves around money and that you can monetize anything or everything's for sale, then it's hard for me to look at you as a person of faith. You know, I think that people hide behind faith so they can get their economic uh, agenda completed. But it, 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 it strikes me as very difficult to consider a person that has love and God in their heart when every single action of theirs is built on trying to monetize something, not so people can get paid, but so they can make money from things like water and air. And I think that uh, what's difficult for people to process is that this is going on within their soul right now or their life or however they choose to see their spiritual struggle or their physical struggle. This is going on within all the people that are watching this program right now. The more you read into history, the more you will see that war is favored by those who seek to remain in power and will use those who are subservient to their societies. You will see how events were orchestrated to trigger a conflict between two types of people so that the third person may benefit off of the entire situation. For those who don't know by now, corporations handle the extortion of natural resources and are directly responsible for the conflicts occurring within countries who are war-torn. Look who benefits from these wars, weapons manufacturers, infrastructure, private investors, and lobbyists of any resource. The conditions given for childhood soldiers in Africa to exist is supplemented by the high demand for precious minerals such as diamonds, coltane, and trumoline. These conflict minerals are the resources used in cell phones and computers. Corporate meddling funds rebel groups as well as government forces to destabilize countries, allowing for corrupt officials to profit off of the entire situation by selling out their country to the corporations. The corporatocracy is this group of individuals, men mostly, few women, who run our biggest corporations. And they really act as the emperor of this empire. Um, they control uh, our media, either through direct ownership or advertising. They control most of our uh, politicians because they finance their campaigns, either through their corporations or through personal contributions that come out of the corporations. And uh, they're not elected. They don't serve a limited term. They don't report to anybody. Uh, they really very, very much are running things. And they work under the premise that they should maximize profits regardless of the environmental and social costs. Terrorism in the Middle East exists due to different factions being funded by specific special interest groups to further more conflict, creating the necessary conditions to destabilize these countries, instilling leaders who will be a puppet to their corporate masters. At the very top of the corporatocracy, you really can't tell whether a person's working for a private corporation or the government because they're always moving back and forth. So, you know, you've got a guy who one moment is the president of, uh, of a big construction company like Halliburton, and, and, and the next moment he's, he's vice president of the United States, or the president who is in the oil business. And, and this is true whether you've got Democrats or Republicans in the office. You have the moving back and forth through the revolving door. The more one reads into history, the more one will realize that this American empire, which all Western countries are forcefully dependent on, is a low-key totalitarian empire disguised as a democracy. Surveillance and security has exploded since 9-11. Organizations dedicated to surveillance listen and watch through all social mediums, computers, and cell phones. Prisons are privatized and owned by the corporatocracy. We have seen an explosion in prison construction that lags only slightly behind the explosion in incarceration. The more people in jail in America now than ever before. In the United States, it's one of the fastest growing industries. Some major investment companies at one time described private prisons as one of the best investments you could make. So you can make more money building prisons than any other type of investment. They're extraordinarily expensive to build. They're even far more expensive to, to operate and maintain. Right now in the United States of America, the biggest growth industry is the privatized prison complex. Japan, for instance, incarcerates at 38 people per 100,000 population. The United States incarcerates at a rate of 726 people per 100,000 population. In a 20-year period, 
the prison population in the United States quadrupled. We have just shy of 5% of the world's population and almost 25% of its prisoners. Even uh, South Africa at its worst didn't have as many prisoners per capita as America has now. Texas just built 77 prisons in about the last 20 years. How can you profit over people going to jail? That's scary. That's a bad, bad sign. Our society is in deep, deep, deep trouble if nobody's looking into that. All one has to do is track the events that led to today, and they will see the obvious truth. This society is the product of the genocide of the Native Americans and the slavery of countless Africans. The sickness of the world is greed, which is allowed to flourish due to the conditions created by the monetary systems. A monetary-based society that values what is worthless and overlooks what is most valuable.